Hi, welcome to my newest pattern video. This is my new striped cowl. It's just a really simple but super cozy cowl. You knit a tube and then sew the ends together so it's just an extra thick and warm. It's really simple to knit too. It's just alternating colors of stockinette and then you seam the two ends together. So it's really simple but I'm going to walk you through every process. It will just be a great layering option for the winter because you knit it in a tube it's just extra thick. So I've had this idea for a while to make a striped cowl because I don't really have anything like it in my wardrobe and I wanted something that just adds a little bit of color. Now obviously I used a gray and a blue but to me this adds a little bit of interest to my outfits and will go really well with my winter coat. To make this cowl you'll need worsted weight yarn, you'll need approximately 345 yards, 316 meters. Worsted is sometimes called medium number four yarn in big box stores like Joann's and I believe in the UK it's called Erin and in Australia it's called Ten Ply. We Are Knitters generously sent me a couple balls of their Merry Fine yarn which is 100% wool with 123 yards per 50 grams. So I have two balls of each in the colorway is gray and blue ray. So you will need two balls of each for this cowl. You'll need a set of US 10 six millimeter needles in the 16 inch 41 centimeter circumference. The gauge is 18 stitches, 23.5 rows equals four inches, 10 centimeters, and you work it in stockinette in the round. And for the sizing, when you lay it flat, it'll be eight and a quarter inch, 21 centimeters wide. But since we're kind of knitting a tube, the tube itself is 16.5 inches, 42 centimeters around. But when you lay it flat, it'll be half of that. And then the actual circumference of the cowl is 27 and a quarter inch, 69 centimeters. So to begin, you'll need to cast on 75 stitches. You can use any method of casting on that you prefer. I really like the long tail cast on, but I will link the beginner cast on if you want to work that one. Once you've done that, make sure that nothing is twisted. My cast on edge is here on the inside and my tails are on my right side and my beginning of my cast on is here on the left. So we're ready to do an invisible join in the round. To begin, we're going to slip one stitch from our left needle to our right needle without twisting it. So take this first stitch on your left needle. With your right needle, go into that first stitch on your left needle from right to left. So as if you were going to purl, and just slip it to your right needle, okay? And now we're going to take the second stitch on our right needle and pass it over this first and off. So I like to just kind of slide them down to the end and with my fingers, pull the second stitch to the tip of the needle and off. So you pull it over and off that first stitch and then you can pull on both tails to tighten up any gap. So go ahead and place your marker for your beginning of round. So this is really, really standard. Just go into the front loop of the first stitch, yarn over from front to back, pull through, slide off, and just keep doing that. So after we knit a couple stitches, you wanna stop and go back. And we want to place a marker or a piece of scrap yarn underneath the first stitch in our row. You're gonna go underneath both legs of that first stitch. You can see it kinda looks like a V. just from right to left, and you're going to tie a slip knot or place a marker in that stitch. And you wanna keep that until the end seaming section because we're going to have to line up the beginning of our cast on with the beginning of our bind off. And so this is an easy way for us to tell that this is the beginning of our cast on. So we're going to do 16 stripes, eight of each color. Go ahead and knit nine rounds of color A, and then for the rest, of the stripes, go ahead and knit 10 rounds of each. And I'll meet you back here when we change our colors. So now it's time to change colors. So I'm gonna show you how to do this without a jog. To begin, you're going to wrap your yarn around your pinky. You just do this a few times until you feel like you have enough tension. You want enough yarn wrapped around your finger that you can weave it in later. Nothing fancy to begin. We're just going to knit until we get to the beginning of round marker. So if you hold your yarn in your right hand, you can wrap it around your left pinky to tension if that's easier. So now we're just going to knit across normally. And after I have, you know, a few stitches, I can let go of the yarn around my pinky and pull it towards the inside. So just keep knitting all the way around. Okay, so once you get down to your last stitch before your marker, it's going to be really loose because it's not really attached to anything. So we're going to knit it 
and then you want to pull on the tail of it just to make it a little bit more even and now you want to slip your marker and the problem with knitting stripes in the round is that you're essentially knitting a giant spiral the beginning around is slightly higher than the row before it so you get kind of a jog with these stripes so to avoid that when we start our second row of any new color okay so we knit the first row completely normal and then when it comes to the second row we're going to slip the first stitch of it as if to purl so go into it from right to left into that first stitch and just move it from your left needle to your right needle and then you just continue knitting now this is going to look like a mess right we're going to clean this up in the end but right now you can kind of just gently pull on these tails to kind of close it up So we're doing a standard knit bind off. So you knit two and then you pass the second stitch over the first and off the needle. I apologize it's shown in kind of a dark colored yarn. I have a more in-depth video if you want to watch that if you've never done like a standard knit bind off before. But essentially you knit the first two stitches normally. Okay. So with your left needle go into the front loop of the second stitch here from left to right into the, just the front loop of it. And now slide them down to the tip of the right needle, but hold on to this first stitch here, your index finger, and just pull that second over and off. Then knit one stitch, and we do the same thing. So into the second stitch from the edge, pull it over the first and off, and we're just going to do this all the way around. And you don't want to do this too tightly. You want the tension to be about the same as knitting a normal row so it's better to have the bind off be a little bit loose rather than a little bit tight and just do that until you have one stitch left and I'll meet you back here for that once you have bound off all the way until you have one stitch left go ahead and cut a tail the tail you want to be at least four times the circumference of your scarf here so four times the circumference or eight times the width this is just an estimate, but this is how I like to do it. I'm not running out of yarn, so I don't need to be extremely precise. Go ahead and take your last cast on stitch and you're going to pull it out. So you can remove your needles and you just wanna keep pulling until your tail is all the way pulled out. What we're gonna do is we're going to fix any jog that we might get. So thread your tail through a yarn needle. I really chose the worst color to demonstrate this with but I'll link a video that has the same process at the end of it if you need a more clear picture. So basically we find our first bound off stitch. So here's one bound off stitch. There's a bunch of V's that go like this across the top. You just find the furthest, most right one. You can also follow your first stitch here. You can follow the column of your first stitch up and that should give you the correct one to go into. But essentially you have a, a V that goes like this and you're going to go underneath both bars of it from front to back. And this would be the first bound off stitch. So pull your yarn through. So here's where our bind off tail is coming out of. You go through the hole that that's coming out of, push through to the back side and pull through. And you've just kind of evened out your bind off. So there should be no dip should just be like a flat surface here. You can set this tail aside, we'll be dealing with that later, but go ahead and turn your cowl inside out. So now we have all of these tails that we have to weave in. We'll start at the bottom where our cast on edge was. So it comes out of this part right here. I'm gonna go into the next stitch to the left, push it through to the wrong side and turn my work over. Now I'm just going to get this stuck in one of these stitches. So if you'll notice, there's a stitch right here, looks like that. I'm going to follow the path of this stitch. So it goes kind of in an upside down U. So I'm going to go up on the left side of that U and then down on the right side of the U. And you've just mimicked that stitch. So I'm gonna do that again. So go over one stitch, go up, And then here's the U right here. So I'm gonna go to the right of it and go down. And I just do that one more time. So here's the stitch in question. It looks kind of like that. And it creates kind of an upside down U. So I go on the left of it, 
pull up and then I go down on the right side. So now I'm just going to go slightly diagonal and split a couple stitches. So I go through like half of a strand instead of the full strand, pull through. And I can cut my yarn. That is completely invisible from the right side of the work. So now we have this hole here from when we joined our new color. So that's what we're going to fix now. So I just kind of gently pull on the tails to kind of close up any gap. So first we're going to deal with the gray, which is our first color. So thread that through a yarn needle. So here's where we're getting a hole, right? So it's coming from the left side and we need to kind of close this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath this loop here. I'm going to go underneath that. I want to kind of mimic something similar to what this stitch is doing. So there's this horizontal bar of our second color here. I'm going to go underneath that. And now I'm going to go follow this stitch here. But there's a stitch here, right? Kind of looks like an upside down U or V. I'm just going to go down on the right side of that one, pull through. And now similar to what we have been doing on the other side, here is a stitch. Okay, it's like that. And then there's kind of creates an upside down U. We're going to mimic that U. So up through here and up through the left of it and then back down through the right side. Okay, and we do that one more time. So through the left side of the next stitch and down through the right side. And I don't pull super tight. I want the tension to be about the same as the stitch that I'm mimicking. And then I split a couple stitches. Again, that's just going into part of a strand instead of going underneath a whole strand. Pull my yarn through and cut it. So do you see how much better that already looks? Our gap, it's even hard to find where our gap is, but it would be right here. So there's no longer a hole like you get here. It's just nice and neat. So now we need to kind of do something similar with the other color. I believe the hole is like right here. So I'm going to go to the left because my yarn started out on the right. So I need to go over to the left. Do the same thing that I did with the gray where I basically mimic a stitch, but I'm going to go up over here and here. It's very hard to see, I know, because it's so dark. But here is that stitch, that upside down U. I'm going to mimic it. So I'll go up on the right side and down on the left side. And then I do the same thing. So here's another one. I go up on the right side and down on the left side. And then up on the right side and down on the wrong side. And then I split a stitch that I've already worked through and cut my yarn. And that's essentially what you do is you're just mimicking the stitches before it. So you can see how good that transition is compared to the one above it. The one above it has a hole and this one does not. And there's no jog. This is why we slip the first stitch of the second row of each color to prevent any jog. It's just kind of a straight line when you start a new color, which you wouldn't get if you didn't do that technique. You do that throughout the whole cowl. Example, our next section, the gray is on the right, so we're going to weave it in over here on the left. And the blue is on the left, so we're going to weave it in over here on the right. And I don't pull super tight. I just pull them until the hole closes and the tension of the stitches are about the same for every stitch along here. And just in case it wasn't clear, I made a tiny little swatch. Here's what it will look like, right? You'll have a big hole here and you'll have one strand of yarn on the left and one on the right. So I always start with the one on the left that is your lower color and then do the one on the right. So I pull on them both to kind of make the stitches about the same size as all the rest. And then I weave the bottom color or the left string through a yarn needle. So do you see this loop here? It's just below where our other color is coming out of. We go from top to bottom through that. And now I like to go through this like kind of float almost that we have. It's like an unattached piece of string of the other color. I go up through that 
and then I move my other color aside. So we have a stitch here, okay, kind of looks like this. We're going to go down the right side of it, so down the right leg of this green one, and then down through the bottom of it, pull through. So here's a stitch right next to the one that we just went into. It looks like this. It's kind of like an upside down U. So we're going to mimic that upside down U. So we go up through the left side here. Left side go up. And then come down on the other side of that U. And go down. And then we just move one stitch over, which would be this one. We go up on the left side. Down on the right. And I do that for a total of like three or four stitches, just till it feels very secure. And then I just kind of split a couple stitches. So I just go through half of a strand of a few stitches. Okay? I usually go a little bit diagonal. Okay? And then I can cut it. Be careful that you cut the right strand, not the other one that hasn't been woven in yet. So there we go. It already looks much, much better. My color change isn't perfect here because it's just on a tiny little swatch, so it's a little bit messier. But now I weave in my other end, and I'm gonna go this way, up and to the left. I'm going to go underneath this stitch here, which is just to the left of the one that I have. And now, just above it is a stitch. Okay, looks like that, kind of an upside down U. So again, we're going to mimic it. So we cut through the right side, down through the left side. So now we're going to move one stitch over, which is this one right here. So we go up on the right side, down on the left. And you do that for about three or four stitches, however many you want. And then I go up and kind of diagonal, splitting a stitch when I'm ready to cut it. So that's the same process that I did when I was weaving in these stripes. I just wanted to show you on a little bit of a clearer color than this dark blue. So I hope that made it a little bit clearer for you. So just do that for every stripe along the way, except for your bind off tail. You'll need your bind off tail to be super long for connecting our ends. So go ahead and weave in all your ends. This is your only chance to do it before we close the sections together. And after you weave in all your ends, it will be time to block your cowl. So depending on how you blocked your swatch, if you want to wash it and block it or steam it, go ahead and do that first. And then I will show you how to seam the ends together. So I have all of my ends woven in. So I'm going to turn my cowl right side out again with our right side facing us. So you wanna orientate it so that your cast on edge is on top and your bind off edge is on the bottom. I didn't twist mine, see how the ends are not twisted, but if you wanted, you could twist it and then line your seams up together because some people like to have that built-in twist. So here I have my two swatches. I'm gonna just show you the basics of what we're doing since one of my actual colors for my scarf is so dark. So here I have my bind off edge and here I have a cast on edge which is the same as the one I used for my cowl. Our yarn is going to be attached to our bind off edge okay? because that's where our bind off tail is connected to. Do you see how you have all these columns of knit stitches? Like here's one, here's one, here's one, all these columns of knit stitches. You're going to go underneath both legs of the column of knit stitches from your cast on edge. The way that we've arranged it, it should be the top side over here. So you go underneath both legs on the lower most knit stitch. So on our final piece, you just wanna kind of line up as best you can, figure out what was your first stitch. But for right now, we're just going to go underneath both legs of that knit stitch above on the top. And now on the bottom, you also have columns of knit stitches, right? We are not going to go underneath the knit stitch in the same way on the bottom. On the bottom, you have like a knit stitch right here. Okay, it looks like this. You're going to actually shift everything over. So if you have two knit stitches like this right next to each other, 
you're going to go underneath both legs. So the left leg of one stitch and the right leg of the other. If this is our first stitch here, we're going to actually shift it. So this is the left leg of that stitch and this is the right leg of the next stitch. So here's one column and we have the left leg of it. And here's the next column and we have the right leg of it. Okay, so go underneath both, pull through. And now we go back up and go underneath both legs of the next knit stitch. So do you see where our yarn is coming out of here? Our yarn is coming out of this hole. So we go back into that hole and pick up the next two bars that create our knit stitch like this. So always from right to left, pull through. And now we go down to the bottom. So do you see where our yarn is coming out of? We go back through that and pick up the next two bars. So it's not quite a knit stitch. It's kind of two legs of two different knit stitches, but you always find where the, the last piece of yarn is coming out of and go into the next two bars. From right to left, pull through, and then we go up and we find where our yarn is coming out of. Go into that hole from right to left underneath the next knit stitch. And then we go down to our bind off edge and we find where the yarn is coming out of. We're going to go underneath these two bars from right to left, pull through. And then go to the top, find where the yarn is coming out of, next stitch from right to left, pull through. And you just keep doing that all the way across. And this is what it's going to start to look like. So if I pull on this, you can see that we have perfect columns. So this column of knit stitches just continues on to the one above it. They're like perfect continuations of each other. That is the process that we're going to do when we seam our cowl together. So here's my cowl. I have my bind off edge here and my cast on edge here. So we're gonna do the same process. So now that we're ready to seam our two ends together, do you remember how we put a marker in the first stitch of our first row of this cowl? Go ahead and find that stitch because that is the first one that you're going to go into when we start seaming. I'll quickly show you how you can kind of estimate where that is if you forgot to put in a marker, but it will be much easier if you have placed that marker first. So if you didn't mark which was the beginning of round for this process, you can kind of look where our joins of our new colors are. You can look at where our new color starts were. There's two bars of this one color right here. So I know that this is about the section. So if I follow that row all the way down, spits me out right about here. So I hold on to that place, turn my work to the right side, and that would make this my first cast on stitch here. This doesn't have to be super exact. You know, if you didn't keep track of it, that's okay. But now we know that that was our first cast on stitch, or at least very close to it. So what we need to do is with your yarn threaded through the bind off tail, you're just going to go ahead and go underneath both bars of that first cast on stitch. So again, this is the process I just showed you with scrap yarn and it's a little clearer that way, but you go underneath both bars of it from right to left, pull through. So now we go back through to the other side I know it's really, really hard to see, and I apologize for that, but you should have like attached to this piece of yarn, there should be a stitch. My piece of yarn actually is kind of in between two stitches like this. Remember, we wanna pick up the left leg of one and the right leg of another, and we go underneath both of these two. Okay, so that's what I've done here. You can rewind to the section where I showed you a scrap yarn if you can't see it. I went underneath one leg of each, pull through and then we go to the cast on side and we go underneath the next stitch, both legs of it. So where that last piece of yarn is coming out of, we go underneath the stitch next to it, pull through and go back and find where that piece of yarn is coming out of on the bottom side. It's coming out of this hole right here. So I pick up the next two legs from right to left, go up to the top and underneath the next two and you just keep alternating. So you always go underneath one knit stitch on the top and the shifted knit stitch on the bottom. So the left leg of one and the right leg of another. And we're just going to do this all the way around. 
go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here for the final few. Every couple of inches you're going to want to pull on the yarn to kind of close up that seam and it will wrinkle like this. So you're just going to pull horizontal and pull in the direction of your outside seam. So I'm pulling these away. So I'm holding my right side static and I'm just pulling away with my left side. So that way you avoid any bunching and your seam will be nice and secure. Okay, I only have about enough of a hole. Again, I fit my finger in, so I'm going to close up the rest and remember to pull in the direction of the hole. So it's a little bit fiddly now, but just go, I think I have three stitches left. I go up under one, down under one, up under one. This is kind of hard to see, but it doesn't have to be exact. Go down underneath one. I actually think that might be it. I have a small hole, but I'm just going to go up through my final one, go down through my final one, and just kind of pull tight to close them and then just pull apart. So now we have kind of an end here that's just, we don't know where to attach it. So it doesn't have to be exact, but I'm going to go underneath a couple of these stitches on the bottom. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to tie a knot. So I went underneath one leg of a stitch to create a loop and I'm just going to tie a tiny, tiny little knot to make sure that none of that unravels. And then you just kind of weave in as best you can back and forth underneath some of these and up another column. So I know that there's a seam underneath this join. So I'm actually going to try and get this caught up in that seam, come out the other side. And now because we tied our knot, we wove it down a little bit, up a little bit, and then we wove it through that seam. So now I'm just gonna cut it close and it will pull through to the other side. It doesn't have to be exact because it's in such a dark color too that you can't even tell. It looks nice and neat and ready to wear. There you have it, that is your fully finished cowl. So again, I apologize for using such a dark yarn. I, I liked the colors, which is why I chose them, but it, I realized afterwards that it ended up making it pretty difficult to show the techniques. So I hope that the scrap yarn demonstrations were good enough for you and that you were able to follow along and knit yourself one of these cowls. That's it for me. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe for lots more patterns and tutorials.